I hope you can see this okay. So um, I'm now going to talk about plant biotic interactions and adaptations in target pests, viruses, and weeds as conundrums in the sustainability of commercial transgenic crops for pest, virus, and weed resistance. So when we talk about uh, transgenic crops, which are resistant to uh, weedicides or herbicides, uh, we usually talk about Roundup Ready transgenic crops. So uh, in, the, in the next few slides, I hope to share with you uh, some updates on herbicide resistant transgenic crops and how they have met their match recently in the emergence of glyphosate resistant pigweeds. So uh, glyphosate, uh, which goes by the brand name of Roundup, is a versatile and globally popular herbicide, which is also marketed in India. So uh, when we talk about Roundup and Roundup Ready transgenic crops, we are referring to the broad spectrum herbicide or glyphosate, which is the active ingredient of Roundup. This particular herbicide inhibits a crucial enzyme that is EPS P synthase, uh, also known as 5-enol pyruvyl shikimate 3 phosphate, which is a major step, which uh, catalyzes a major step in the shikimate pathway. So the EPSP synthase enzyme catalyzes the penultimate step of the ubiquitous shikimate pathway in plants, which uh, contributes to the biosynthesis of essential aromatic amino acids. So actually, many companies market glyphosates, and uh, this herbicide is broad spectrum. It works against weeds which have broad leaves, annual and perennial grasses. Um, this also has low persistence in soil, so it can be applied several times. Glyphosate has low acute toxicity, so it is safer to use for farm workers in comparison to older unsafe herbicides like 2,4-D and dicamba. So uh, Roundup Ready crops are actually transgenic plants, which have been engineered to become resistant to the glyphosate herbicide. These transgenic plants typically contain a transgene, which is derived from an agrobacterium species, uh, which is known as a strain CP4. So uh, this particular strain contains a glyphosate tolerant enzyme, known as the CP4 EPSP synthase. Uh, these uh, bacteria, sorry, this bacteria was actually isolated from uh, glyphosate-rich waste environments. And so it can actually grow and thrive in an environment where there is high concentrations of glyphosate. So the expression of the transgenic CP4 EPSP synthase in crop plants results in the uh, development of glyphosate-tolerant crops. Uh, in turn, this enables more effective weed control by allowing post-emergent herbicide applications. The substantial advantages of glyphosate-tolerant transgenic plants have resulted in large-scale and rapid adoption in many countries, especially the United States, for more than a decade. So glyphosate-ready, glyphosate-tolerant transgenic plants include soybean, corn, canola, sugar beet, and so on and so forth. So what is the molecular basis for herbicide resistance in Roundup Ready crops? This question was addressed uh, in a PNAS paper published in 2006. So the gene that encodes CP4 EPS P synthase uh, as I mentioned, was isolated from an agrobacterium species that was sampled from a glyphosate west rich environment. The encoded enzyme is insensitive to inhibition by glyphosate, especially at low concentrations, and it has an IC50 of about 11 millimolar. The CP4 EPSP synthase needs monovalent cations like ammonium, rubidium, potassium to facilitate the utilization of PEP. So uh, in uh, regular plants, uh, the EPSP synthase catalyzes the interaction of the uh, substrate, that is shikimate 3-phosphate or S3P with PEP to produce EPSP. 
So glyphosate is an inhibitor of uh, EPSP synthase, and it prevents the conversion of shikimate 3-phosphate or S3P to EPSP with the use of PEP. So as a result of which, amino acids are not synthesized and the uh, weeds die. So uh, the uh, CP4 EPSP uh, synthase uh, that is there allows the uh, plant uh, to the transgenic plant to go ahead and synthesize EPSP even in the presence of glyphosate. So uh, on the right side of the slide, you see the structure of uh, unbound CP4 EPSP, which exists in an open state. Uh, so uh, as you can see in this particular uh, slide, you can also see that when there is a substrate, that is S3P, which binds to uh, EPSP, CP4 EPSP synthase, there is a conformational change. So as a result of this conformational change, which may be a sort of an induced fit, if you like, the enzyme converts into a closed state. So you can see what happens to this particular loop, which uh, in the open state uh, is, uh, can be seen uh, here in this uh, particular structure. This loop extends from 347 amino, position of the amino acid to 358. So in the closed uh, structure, uh, uh, what happens is that there is a conformational change in this particular loop. And this particular uh, loop uh, prevents glyphosate from binding to the active site. So uh, the amino acid residue, alanine at position 100, protrudes into this active site and uh, in, in, in the closed state of the enzyme. And so uh, glyphosate is found here in the condensed state and it prevents uh, the, uh, and, and, and it cannot essentially prevent the uh, EPSP synthase from interacting with PEP. So essentially, if one wanted to uh, reverse engineer this, uh, a single amino acid mutation which converts alanine 100 to glycine uh, in CP4 EPSP synthase would restore susceptibility to inhibition by glyphosate and uh, by allowing the glyphosate molecule to be in an extended inhibitory state. So this slide shows you uh, how, how uh, effective this system of glyphosate resistant transgenic crops and the application of Roundup. Uh, so Roundup and Roundup ready transgenic crops have been used successfully uh, for a very long time. This particular slide gives you some data about how much glyphosate has been used to control herbicides uh, in North America. Uh, and you can see, especially the US and Canada from 1992 to 2014. And you can see that the uh, application of glyphosate has uh, increased in the US. And uh, this slide shows you that uh, it has been used to control herbicides in uh, corn fields as well as in soybean. So just as there has been increase in the application of uh, glyphosate to control uh, weeds, there also has been emergence and spread of resistant weeds. An example of a glyphosate resistant pigweed, which is a, has turned out to be a major problem in the United States is uh, the Palmer amaranth. Another glyphosate resistant pigweed is water hemp or amaranthus tuberculatus, both of which uh, belong to amaranthaceae. So uh, glyphosate resistant pigweeds pose a major threat to productivity of Roundup ready transgenic crops. Uh, the uh, uh, Palmer amaranth, also known as Amaranthus palmeri, is a pigweed species which has developed glyphosate resistance and has become the most important weed problem uh, in many parts of the United States, especially southeastern and mid south uh, regions of the country. So uh, there are many reasons why uh, the Palmer amaranth is such a prolific weed and is able to resist uh, uh, 
glyphosates. So one of the reasons for that is that it is a very prolific seed producer. It produces more than 200,000 seeds per plant. So Palmer amaranth populations can quickly develop from a few plants into a major infestation if it is not controlled uh, by uh, herbicides. So the uh, resistance, uh, resistant uh, plants spread very quickly uh, from uh, field to field, mostly because of the use of farm equipment, uh, which sort of spreads the uh, weeds uh, and also through pollen. So this is a major problem because it is a very prolific weed. Uh, this particular plant is actually native to South America. So what is it that makes the uh, Palmer amaranth or amaranthus palmeri such a prolific weed? And what is it, more importantly, that makes this particular pigweed uh, resistant to uh, resistant to glyphosate. So uh, there have been many papers, uh, especially a breakthrough report that was published in July 2020 in the journal, The Plant Cell, where uh, it was clearly shown that extra chromosomal circular DNA or ECC DNA is responsible for uh, the glyphosate resistant phenotype in this particular weed because uh, this involves uh, gene amplification uh, and the resulting increase in the number of copies of the gene encoding the EPSP synthase. So if there is a lot of EPSP synthase available, then glyphosate is not effective as a herbicide. And that is the reason why uh, this particular weed, this particular pig weed, is uh, so uh, effective uh, and can resist uh, glyphosates. So what are ECC DNAs? Uh, this slide tells you about extra chromosomal circular DNAs, amplified EPSP genes, and the trait of glyphosate resistance. So the ECC DNAs drive rapid adaptive evolution in amaranthus palmary, conferring glyphosate resistance. The ECC DNAs are transmitted to the next generation by tethering to mitotic and meiotic chromosomes via DNA binding proteins like zinc finger proteins. So on the left, you see a figure uh, of uh, various ECC DNAs which are associated with uh, a pacotine crep uh, stained with DAPI, that is an A where the white arrowheads uh, show the positions of different ECC DNAs. Uh, this result is confirmed in the panel D, where you can see a fluorescence in situ hybridization image of ECC DNA and EPSP synthase genes. So uh, if you look at the middle figure, it shows you the reference genome of uh, ECC DNA, which is about 400,000 uh, base pairs. And uh, you can see that this is, of course, a circular DNA molecule where there are a large number of direct repeats containing EPSP synthase genes as well as indirect repeats. So the direct repeats are shown in the red uh, lines here, and the blue lines show indirect repeats of the EPSP synthase. So if you look at a uh, Palmer uh, amaranthus plant, in the presence of glyphosate and in the absence of glyphosate, one appreciates that uh, the genes which encode the EPSP synthase present on the uh, ECC DNA uh, are expressed to high levels, shown here by the red and dark red uh, maroon colored uh, boxes in transcriptome RNA-seq uh, results. Uh, and so basically, uh, these multiple additional EPSP synthase genes are expressed at high levels, and this enables the, the weed, the pig weed, to overcome the uh, inhibition that is caused by the presence of glyphosate. So this is a slide that shows you a cartoon summary of what we have been talking about. On the left, you see how uh, uh, glyphosate-resistant pigweed uh, is surviving 
uh, in the presence of other weeds uh, which are killed by glyphosate. And that this is because of the presence of, shown on the right, extra chromosomal circular DNA, which are associated with the plant DNA and contain uh, multiple copies of the EPSP synthase gene. So uh, these are uh, some uh, newspaper and uh, popular and agronomic uh, journals and magazines which are carrying titles and headlines such as Farmer Amaranth, the king of weeds, cripples new herbicides. It talks about weed scientists brace for a second year of dicamba use. Dicamba, if you remember, is a uh, old generation uh, herbicide which is similar to T24D and is uh, really not safe for the environment. So uh, farmers have had to go back to the use of unsafe uh, herbicides like dicamba to deal with farmer amaranth and uh, similar uh, pigweeds. So in terms of what we have been talking about, about sustainability uh, of uh, transgenic crops, that have been developed for herbicide uh, resistance, uh, we realize that there has to be life after Roundup. Now, if uh, you are aware of uh, any of the literature about agricultural biotechnology, one would appreciate that Roundup and Roundup-ready transgenic crops in some ways were the poster child of agricultural biotechnology. So after so many years of uh, actually being a part of agroecosystems and having contributed to uh, productivity, food security, and so on and so forth, one realizes that just like natural uh, R gene uh, mediated resistance mechanisms, there is a shelf life of these transgenic products. So what is, what is the solution uh, out of the conundrum? Perhaps we need new approaches, new chemistries, and new technologies, which are urgently needed. But at the same time, it is very important to appreciate that agroecosystem, uh, national, uh, local level information about plant biotic interactions, component of the plant biotic interactions, awareness of these uh, interactions, and monitoring is very important in order to ensure that there is sustainability of uh, future commercial transgenic crops for pests, virus, and weed resistance. Perhaps a more integrated approach, which involves elements of organic farming practices uh, with conventional uh, farming practices in a uh, sort of an integrated manner is, is the way ahead. So I wanted to thank you for giving me this op opportunity to talk to you about uh, this important topic. And uh, these are some of the additional readings that I had uh, promised before. Uh, and uh, I would be happy to interact with any one of you should you choose to email me. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>